Good morning. I said a while back that I would report um, how things went with the um, foot controller that I bought. So I guess I better do that. Um, I want to be a man of my word. So I have this door midi, or I don't know, sometimes I think they say do re midi um, foot controller. Um, it's pretty solid. It's got an aluminum case. So it's not like cheap plastic like some of the other ones. It costs a little more. But what I like is it has USB and MIDI. And you can also plug in an expression pedal. And you see I have the blue tape on there so I could remember the MIDI control mapping. So what I basically did is the, sh the, the center one, um, the default is CC64, which is sustain pedal. And I decided to leave that one as is because that way I have the option to use it as a sustain or um, whatever. But there's a lot of um, programs that I would use that don't require really a sustain pedal like, like lead sounds. So what I did is in my um, plug-in host. So the Dr. Drive, that's the overdrive. I'll show you what that looks like. It's a nice free plug-in um, from Audiority. Um, what I did was I put that on the sustain pedal switch so that if you want to switch the overdrive off and on, now it's on. Or it, uh, I have it on the uh, bypass setting because it's just easier to leave it on all the time. And now it's bypassed. So what that sounds like would be this. Um, it's bypassed, so this will just sound like the Moog. <laughs> Overdrive. So that's fun. But what you can also do with this is I set up the um, control numbers for the um, recording on um, Group the Loop is the app here. Now it's counting in. And then if you want to change tracks, it'll cycle through all the, that's the third switch. So I, um, that seems to be a good setup and like you can go in other apps and you can use MIDI Learn. Um, anything that's a um, continuous control, a CC number, you can usually use MIDI Learn anyway. So what I'll probably do is, um, like if I wanted to go into um, AUM, so we go my alto flute. So this is one that's got a lot of stuff going on. So what I could easily do is put one switch on toggling on and off the um, the flute plug-in. And then you could put one of the other switches on the um, reverb or delay or whatever. Um, because with MIDI Learn, it's easy to um to add bindings, and then you can put the switch on where where you can toggle things on and off, or you could toggle on and off the um the modular synth too, um because that's what this is. This is the alto flute, and this is the modular synth. So so that's just different ways that I can use that foot pedal. So I mean, it's pretty convenient. You have like a three switch pedal. And the, the default, when you buy it, the default is this is just um, um, next patch, or no, this is back down, but, you know, program change up and down, and um, or up and down. But anyway, the default is, is not uh, switches one and three are the program change, but, like, I don't really cycle through patches that way. Um, there might be times where that would be convenient, but most of the time... Um, it's more useful for me to, um, to, to to use them as a continuous control and then I can set up bindings with them because you can't really set up bindings with the um, program control up and down. It doesn't really work. Okay, so there is a programmer app, um, the pedal config tool, and there was a um, driver I had to install. It'll open in a second here. So this is where you would, um, it's not plugged in, so I can't show you, but 
Um, this is where you would go in and you could change, um, for example, which um, switch you have, because it's uh, one through four. And then you can set the switch type. And then if you're doing it um, continuous control versus note versus program change, and then this would be data range one. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Data range one would be, that's the um, control number. So if you want CC 74, 71, whatever. And then I have it on single switch, but you can also toggle on and off. Um, and then data range two, that is your, um, like if you're just doing on and off, then it goes to 127. You know, you want zero to 127. But um, what you could do is you could put it on a control like for um, brightness or um, filter frequency. You could set it to the CC for that. And then I think you can do increase, decrease. And then if you just want to hit the, the pedal switch to open the filter, of course, I'm using breath, so I don't need to do any of that. But um, that's just some of the ways that you can set this up. So it actually has pretty good flexibility and... Um, so far, it seems to be working pretty good. Now, um, I've had it for a while. I was mostly using it to just cycle through the um, patches with the program change at first. And then I was still leaving it on. Um, I didn't have any of the um, mapping done. Um, took me a little while to figure that out. But um, now that I have the mapping working on it, um, it it's pretty cool. Um, it's definitely nice to be able to, um, you know, start and stop loop recordings to, um, to change loop tracks, and then you still can use it as a sustain pedal, which is nice because if I'm using the wind controller presently, I mean, without the foot switch, I would actually have to have a MIDI controller with the sustain pedal plugged into it. So I'd have to have one of my, um, I'll just show it this way so I don't flip the camera. I'd have to have one of those plugged in with the sustain pedal and all this stuff. But what you could do with the foot switch is you still have sustain right here at your CC64. It does have a little display. So so this 25, that's the, um, on them group the loop, that's the recording thing. And then 21 is the, the other one. So it shows you which CC number you're sending. 